So this is the page you need to keep an eye on. The levelling up and regeneration bill is moving through Parliament. And as of right now, it is at the committee stage in the House of Lords. Now, it's likely, if all goes well without any issues, that it will receive royal assent at the end of April, which basically means it will then become law. The reason why I'm telling you this is because of this. So section 107 of this talks about the time limits for enforcement, which is very, very relevant if you ever consider using the four year rule. And as you'll notice, in section 17B of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990, time limits for the words from four years to the end substitute in the case of a breach of planning control in England, 10 years beginning with the date on which the operations were substantially completed. Now that basically now means that if you want to if you're, if you're thinking about using the four year rule to benefit from deemed consent, so if you've made changes to your house or residential building, you would fall back on the four year rule. Now the test is 10 years. So that means you need to be even more organized. If you want to apply for a certificate of lawfulness for any alterations you make to a residential building, you need to show 10 years of evidence. So that is a quite fundamental change if you're ever considering using the certificate of lawfulness. So by the end of April, you need to have your applications in to make to demonstrate that four years have passed from your residential change or alteration otherwise if you apply after this bill has received royal assent and assuming this provision is still in the bill from one day you will be applying four years the next day you'll be applying and you'll need to demonstrate 10 years so very very important and one you need to keep an eye on and if you want to learn more about the planning process and how you can unlock value out of any property click the link below to learn more so I've previously done a video on the four year rule and the four year rule is something that people use if you have a residential building, if you've made alterations or changes to a residential building, if you haven't applied for planning permission and you've done them without planning permission, then you need to show that those works were done more than four years ago and, and you apply to the local authority for what's called a certificate of lawfulness. You apply for a certificate of existing use or development and you'll see the application forms on the planning portal when you apply. Now, the reason this is so important is because when you get issued that certificate, it's essentially a legal document. It's proof from the council that what you have done is lawful. So in effect, you can make any alterations you want. But if you haven't had any enforcement action from the point that you built it leading up to the more than four years that you're applying, then you can apply for the certificate and you get what's called deemed consent. You apply for a certificate of lawfulness for existing use or development. And then you have this legal document at the end that says, yes, they, this what you've done is lawful. Now, that not only keeps the enforcement officers at bay, it's something that you can show to neighbours or anyone that can, and objects. But also other the other important thing, if you come to sell the building or buy a building, you have evidence that 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 any alteration is lawful, it's legal and that there's no there'll be no follow up on that as a result. So right now, the levelling up and regeneration bill is passing through Parliament. And what it proposes right now is that those four, the four year rule for enforcement is changing to 10 years. Now, that is a significant change. And if you don't know what you're looking at, you would have missed it. But it's very, very important because a lot of people use the four year rule to demonstrate what they've done is lawful. And a lot of people actually fall back on that, knowing that I'll just build it and then no one will complain. And then I've got four years. But 10 years is a different ball game because Keeping your records in place for 10 years is a big task and it's not one that's easy. So this is a really big change that you need to be aware of because it's happening right now. If the levelling up and regeneration bill passes as is intended, then probably by the end of April, this will be law, which then means from the end of April onwards, from when the bill is passed and is adopted as law, you'll then one day you'll be applying to demonstrate four years, then the bill will pass and then next day, then you'll need to demonstrate 10 years. Now, that's a significant change. You need to know that very soon that bill is going to pass and it's going to have significant impacts if you plan on if you plan on using this route. Now, for the rest of this video, I'll touch on the important things that you need to have in place so that if you are going to apply for the four year rule before this bill has passed, then you can get all this information in, in place to show that what you've got is lawful because it's very, very important. Again, because if you don't have that information in place and if you don't apply before the bill has passed, then you're going to have to show 10 years. And that is a big deal. That means that anyone can object with it. Anyone can complain to the enforcement department in those 10 years. And then you could either be enforced upon, you could be asked to apply for planning permission or what's worse, you could be asked to tear it all down, whatever you've done. So it's a very significant change and one you need to be aware of. So I'll start walking through the important things that you need to have in place 
to benefit from this before the bill changes. So as this applies to residential buildings, I'll touch on the typical thing. So let's just take a case study example of a rear extension. If you've done a rear extension without planning permission, then there are certain things you need to have in place for more than four years so that when you apply, you can demonstrate to the council that what you've done is lawful. So now, obviously, four years ago is a long time. You can't create these records. So hopefully you have receipts somewhere. You can't fabricate this information. So hopefully you have receipts somewhere and evidence somewhere that you can dig up so that when you come to apply, you have everything in, in place. So these aren't in any particular order because every single piece of evidence that you have builds on your case and is, makes your case more and more compelling. First thing that comes to mind that you can do is you can dated photographs. So if you have photos of your site from 2018 showing that this it was built in 2018, that's one thing. And then the next level up is that you can go to Google has that timeline. So you can go back in time or you can use old maps. You can go back in time. And if you can show that at a point more than four years ago, your rear extension was built, then that's another piece of evidence. And the other obvious piece of evidence that you can show is receipts of anything that's being built. So just just start from the point that you even thought about doing the rear extension all the way to the end. So when you thought about it, what did you do? You applied for quotes, you'll need dated, you'll need those dated. Then you'll get an email confirming who you appointed, make sure that's dated, and then you will want confirmation of when those works were gonna start. So hopefully when you appointed the contractor or the builder, they'll say, okay, we're gonna be on site on X date. Hopefully that's more than four years ago and have photos of the work as it progresses. Now, this is a perfect case, by the way. So if you don't have all of this information, that's not the end of the world, but you will need some of this information to make sure that you can use it. So dated photographs as it's being built, any correspondence you have, again, with the builder, or if there are certain materials you needed, like a certain type of window or materials or bricks or any type of material, receipts of purchase showing, again, dated, obviously, when they were bought, and then again, what would be more compelling again is dated photos of those materials used on site. So you're walking through the whole development process, dated photos, when was the builder appointed? How's he doing? How are they doing on site as they progress? And then obviously the next thing is that they complete. Now you'll then need, again, dated photos of it being complete, but also evidence that's from the builder that's done. Now you should have a completion certificate or at the very least an email or a letter saying we're finished or the work has been complete. Maybe you even have a satisfaction survey, I don't know, that shows that we did this work on X date. What do you think? And all of these bits of information have to be dated to show that they are more than four years ago. And if you have all this information together, then you're in a good place. Another good bit of information that you can submit is that if you had a survey done when you were looking at doing the rear extension, you might have some existing floor plans. Again, they were dated. And then as a result of that, they'll show floor plans that were what you wanted to do. So if you have proposed floor plans, all of these dated, and then if this tallies up with the contractor you appointed, when they were appointed, when they said they were finished, and you have everything is within, you know, and the branding or the name of that company is on the drawing, then you have a kind of clear timeline and a clear progression of works to show that exactly what was built was what was within it was within accordance of what they agreed to build, and it was more than four years ago. So here I've obviously used the case of a rear extension, but this applies to any residential alteration. So any works to the front of the house, any works, any side extensions, any porches that you've built, any dormer windows, any terrace or balconies that you've done, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a residential building, so a dwelling house, and you've done these changes, then you need to demonstrate all this evidence more than four years ago so that when you apply, you have all this evidence and when you do apply, obviously the evidence is one thing, but the important thing is to have a clear timeline for the officer and the local authority to, to assess. So with the application, you'll need to prepare a statement. It's basically just a cover letter to say, I'm applying for this rear extension that I built more than four years ago. And then you say, and this is the evidence I'm submitting to demonstrate that it was done more than four years ago. And then you should walk through the information just as I have. I appointed X contractor on this date. This is when they started. This is photos of when they were building. This is photos of when they were done. This is evidence that they completed. These are the plans that they, they that, that they work to. These are dated. This was the company we appointed. And then you have all of this information in line. And if you walk it through chronologically for the officer to assess, then the point is that the, 
the test is then they need to, you need to demonstrate without doubt that what you've built is done more than four years ago. Without doubt is the key. So the more information you have, the more compelling it is to that officer to demonstrate that it is without doubt done more than four years ago. Hopefully this is going to catch someone in time. But the big thing is the bill is coming. Once that bill has received royal assent, assuming that it all goes through as planned, not anything can happen between then and now, but assuming that it has been, uh, that everything, all the provisions within have been agreed and assuming it gets a royal assent, we're looking at probably the end of April. Now having that information lined up more than 10 years ago is a big task. So make sure you get all this information in now. If you don't have it, make sure you go and find it and make sure you get it all sorted and sent to the authorities as soon as you can, because everything is gonna change very soon if you don't have that information ready.